Let me say good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. We're going to try to do this. I'm going to try to do this song. I didn't pull up me one from YouTube. Do Lord, do Lord, do Lord, remember me. Do Lord, do Lord, do Lord, remember me. Do Lord, do Lord, do Lord, remember me. Oh, do Lord, do Lord, do Lord, remember me. When I'm in trouble, do Lord, remember me. Oh, when I'm in trouble, do Lord, remember me. Do Lord, do Lord, do Lord, remember me. Me to Lord, to Lord, to Lord, remember me when I'm dying, Lord, to Lord, remember me. Oh, when I'm dying, Lord, to Lord, remember me. Do Lord, do Lord, do Lord, remember me. Do Lord, do Lord, remember me. When the world's on fire, do Lord, do Lord, remember me. When the world's on fire, do Lord remember me? Oh, do Lord, do Lord, do Lord remember me? All right, all right, all right, all right. Let us know for our scripture reading. I know we need the Lord to remember us because if the world is not on fire, it's crazy. <laughs> okay. Our scripture reading is going to come from Psalms, the 23rd Psalm, in its entirety, and it reads as follows. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down and to green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepareth the table before me. And in the presence of mine enemies, thou anointest my head with oil, my cups runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Now, let us just go in prayer for a moment. Father God, we may be few in number, but the heart is set on you. And Father, we come this morning in prayer and thanksgiving as we are uh, thanking you for your being trustworthy and a God who we can count on regardless of what the situation is. And as the song asks us, just remember me, Lord, when everything is going wrong, remember me because we are your children and we want your continued hand of protection upon us. And we, the other blessing we ask in your son Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, all right, we got a topic that all of us can chime in on. And uh, we're coming out of Hebrews, the sixth chapter, and verses nine through 20. And it talks about full assurances or a trumpet of serving a trustworthy God who keeps all of his promises, a promise that we count on. And it's so fitting that uh, devotional reading of Psalms 23, when he looks at every one of those verses in the Psalms, it talks about God's protective care. 
And the very first one, it says, the Lord is, not he was, or he will be my shepherd, but he is our ever-present shepherd. And whatever it is that we need, he so graciously supplies it. And if we compare that to humanity, we will become discouraged a lot of times. Because uh, man, man will break his promise to us. And many times it's because of unseen uh, circumstances that will cause him to, him or her, to not be able to keep the promise. But we know that God is a trustworthy. He's sovereign. And whatever he promises, it is going to come to pass. And I, I, if I waffle back and forth between the Psalms 23, because that is one of my favorite scriptures, it shows us just how trustworthy God is. And so the writer of this book of Hebrews is trying to get those Christians there is to not give up when life disappoints. Now, we all have had some of those. I, yeah, if I could tell you, say, okay, well, what, what was your disappointment, Sister Kate? What was some of your, you'd have a long laundry list, uh, Sister Servo, what was some of your disappointments? And the whole laundry list. But then how we, because that's just the world we live in. And when we have expectations of something, and when somebody promised to do something, we get disappointed when that promise is not kept. But we have to pick ourselves up and say, okay, I know who I can't trust. And that's God. And I was, it was, oh, maybe a couple of months ago, and I know this, but you know, every time, ever so often you read things or people say things that bring these back to your remembrance. If we put God first, we won't get so disappointed when man puts it, disappoints us, you know. So this is what the, the, the this, this lesson is is trying to convey to us today. Whatever you're going through or whatever you're doing, and yes, we are out here on this Christian journey. We are witnessing Christ through our words and our lifestyle. But you know what? We live in a fallen world. And we're going to get disappointed sometimes. Even uh, if people don't show up for church or we put on a program and it don't work out like we we think it should have worked out. And I had to learn this. And one of the mothers of the church told me that. And she was the pastor or the founding pastor's wife said, show it to God first. Whatever your program is or whatever your endeavor is, Get his approval before you go to Maine. Because God, when he gives his approval, he will walk with you every step of the way to make sure it is brought to a full completion. That's the, 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 what the lesson is trying to say. When God makes us a promise, that's something we can count on. So, now... And and I'm going to tie this lesson in, but I want to really focus on trusting God always, because He we have His full assurances that He when He says, "I will not leave you, neither will I forsake you," and I will take you by the hand, and when we are going through the troubled waters in life, and I will lead you around those troubled waters. You, how many of us remember this song? Lord, don't move my mountain. Just give me the strength to climb the mountain. <laughs> That's what we got mountains in our life. We have troubled waters in our life. But we thank God that we have a trustworthy, loving, compassionate God. You know, even when our, some of our uh, dire situation is self-inflicted because of the situation we the, the decision we made. How can we look back on this summer and say, you know, if I hadn't made that situation, that decision, I wouldn't be in this trouble, uh, this situation. 
if I had just took time and thought it through just a little bit more, I wouldn't, maybe things wouldn't be so. We have those, but you know what? Even at that, when we have our own self-inflicted wounds, God loves us so much, and he's so full of compassion, he just picks us on up and just tarry us right on through, as if it didn't happen. You know, see, these are, those are some, those are some encouraging facts about God that we know and experiences that we have experienced in God. I, and if you're over 20 years old, you've experienced some things. And if whether you are old enough to recognize it or mature enough to recognize it, it was God that got you out of that situation. Mm -hmm. It was him. So this is what he, uh, he the writer of, uh, of the Psalms was, was writing to those believers that not to become discouraged when things doesn't go according to how it is planned, but they always take notice and take note of and be mindful of the fact that, listen, you serve a trustworthy God. You serve a faithful God who is there with you every step of the way. And he's true to his promise that I will not leave you, neither will I forsake you. So that's what he, he, the writer of the Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, was writing to them, encouraging them and said, please don't get discouraged. I want you, even when you stumble, just get up, dust yourself off, and start over again and say, Lord, I messed up. And, and, and I'm paraphrasing a lot of this because it's the essence of what he's saying when he tells her, now, I don't want you to be, with this, uh, be discouraged. And our blessing starts with uh, verse 9. He said, Beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation. Though we speak of it, he said, listen, I don't care what you're going through. There's better things to come. And there are better days to come. And I want you to be encouraged. I want you to take confidence in your faith in Jesus Christ. Because, you know, we are going to be challenged. And I want you to remember what Christ told us when doing his earthly ministry. The world is hated going to hate us because it hated him. It just hadn't changed, but he kept warning them and warning his believers, his audience, that you serve a trustworthy God and who has your back regardless of your situation. Isn't that a wonderful thing to know that whatever adversities we encounter, we have a God that we can depend on? Mm -hmm. We have a God that we can depend on. And he is a forgiving God, even of our shortcomings. And in, the, in verses 10 through 12, the writer goes on to point out to them these things. And let me read it before I go to talking. Because since I, I found so much in this lesson that fits today. And he says this, For God is not unrighteous to forget your good works and your labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Okay, in verse 11, it said, and we desire that every one of you show the same diligence to the full assurances of hope until that end. In verse 12, he says this, but I don't want you to become slowful, but followers, of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So what he's saying to his audience and to all of us today, he don't care what you do, you serve a righteous God. He is the best record keeper there is. He keeps a record of your good works and how hard you are laboring in the vineyard of preaching and teaching and witnessing Christ to the unsaved. You know, I, I did have a thought, it just ran away. It'll come back. He said, because now everybody, they're going to come a day, all of us, saved and unsaved, hard workers and not so much, 
is going to have to stand before the righteous judge. And he's going to have to give an account of what you do or what you don't do for God. That's who you have, <clears throat> you're going to have to give an account to. But now, even when you feel like you're, you're, you're going and going and working for Christ, and, no, and, and there is no results to be seen. People is going on their wicked ways and saying, oh, I don't need to go to church this morning. I don't need Christ in my life. And, oh, I can pick that up later. Well, we are to, we who are in Christ, as are to continue planting the seed. And in God's time, he will bring the increase because he will water it. You know, let's just look at it this way. We plan our, how many of us got a garden or have had a garden? We plant those we plant those seeds, right? Some of us plant seeds, some we plant those for bushes. But we plant them, but we can't make them grow. And God, He has them, He it just has His growing cycle that them we water, yeah, we water. And that's gonna keep on nurturing them. That's what we do in Christian life. We bring them on in, we just keep nurturing them so they will grow. That's the water. God will certainly bring forth that seed and mature that plant. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with our flowers. So the point I'm trying to say that, that the, the, the writer is getting over to the people at Hebrews and us today. Yes, you know how many times I have gotten discouraged in there being in this ministry this, this short time as a pastor, that I've gotten discouraged. And I had to step back and go and say, Lord, you gave me this. I asked you to grow it, and you're going to grow it at your pace. Let me stay in your will and walk with you and, and not ahead of you. See, this is what he's trying to tell, you know, we do get discouraged, and I don't, and I don't hope to tell us, you surely will get discouraged. Because you want the best, even it's for your loved ones. How many of us, well, we all got children. How many of us tell our children A, B, C, and D, and they go on head along the other way? Mm -hmm. We become discouraged with how they are thinking and how they, they seem to not be paying attention. We get discouraged. So what do we do? We have to remember, I am teaching you out of love. I'm trying to steer you out of love. But and if you fall, I'm going to still love it. And God is the same way. And we be there for our children when they make an error. And God is there for us when we err. So, but we are not to get discouraged. We have to, just, as I said, sit down, take a deep breath, and say, Lord, I can't give up. I can't give up. Yes. And that's all he's trying to, the writer is trying to, to say uh, to the people of, uh, of, his, of his audience. And, I, and it's so funny and it's so applicable that these lessons apply to us today. We have to sit down and look, how do this fit into what we are going through today? What, uh, and how our society is. Uh, and if I ask all of you, I ask you, what is your take on how society is running them up? We have concerns about it because we knew we know that it is sinful and it doesn't have to be that way. That's the whole thing I'm trying to say. Oh, <clears throat> but he said in verse 12, and I'll reread this and I listen. Do not become slowful, but always follow the righteousness. And the times when we have, like, we seem like we face disappointment after disappointment, we tend to like it to beat us down physically and say, oh, I don't feel like doing it anymore. I'm going to just stop. And that's what he's encouraging and said, now listen, you keep following God who is righteous. He's long suffering. He sees you from your head to toe, inside and out in your heart. And he knows that you are getting tired. And he will pick you up and say, do not become dismayed, 
do not come discouraged. Now that's Isaiah 41 and verses 10. He tell you in the book, I am with you and I'm going to uphold you with my righteous right hand. I want you to keep going. And then Paul tells us, and he says, in my weakest time, I'm strong because of the Holy Spirit takes over. Do not become discouraged and say, oh, I'm going to give up. I'm going to just give up. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You know, and I'll, I'll make this confession. I'm just trying to make a point that when we have committed ourselves, to doing what Christ has called us to do. We are tested a lot of times. Our commitment and our faith. I have been on two nights in this Bible study. Nobody but me and God. But you know, I told him, I said, well, Lord, you give it to me. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. And I just go ahead on to teach the lesson. And going on about my business and said, okay, <clears throat> it'll help whoever hears it. Mm -hmm. And my point is this, regardless of whatever, just don't become discouraged and give up. Because one thing about it, we can always go to God for his strength, and we can always rely on him. And another point that I really want to make here is this, when you are when we commit ourselves to God and doing his works, truly doing his work, and our heart is there, that's where the truth lies, he will be there for us. If man stands up and says, oh, I don't need him, because God in his own time <clears throat> is going to bring it to where everybody going to need it. <clears throat> and I say this on that, to uh, follow up to that note, is that, I'm seeing more and more people is acknowledging who God is and his sovereign power. And I'm saying, okay, prayers is working. When you're talking about healing of this nation, turn these people back to God. Truly turn them back to God. Because we have just gotten away so far away. This country has gotten so far away from it. It is just unreal. When I was born up as a kid in the South, you couldn't buy liquor or anything else on Sunday. Now you can even buy liquor, play the lottery, do anything you want to do on Sunday. I can remember when no no businesses, no commercial business, none mm -hmm. of that was open on Sunday. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now people rather go shopping on a Sunday than go to work on Monday. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, uh, so because God, they took, and that's Reverend Sunday, that's a holy day, and I'm going to set that day aside. All I can't do in six days is a certain way to start over with on Monday. Mm -hmm. That's just how it is. Now it's it just it's just nothing. Nothing of what seems like it's, uh, I'll, get to, I'll get around to serving God. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay, since you have that attitude, I'm going to just step aside and let Satan have his way with you. And boy, isn't he having his way. You cannot read the news or hear the news that some mass shootings. There was another one yesterday down Texas somewhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just it's just unreal to how <clears throat> we have come and so far away from God in this this society. And I've been hearing, you know, the Louisiana passed this law that the Ten Commandments has to be in the classroom of every school. And I said, thank you, Jesus. And some have said, it shouldn't be there. It should be there. And all in my generation and a few, but it, did, it didn't do anything to me. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We had devotion every single day before we started. Day. And before yep. we said anything about Jane can't read or Jane read or Jane the, what is the hump, the whatever, whatever. But the point is, before we had any secular question, we had worship service. We had worship service and pledge allegiance to the flag. To the flag. And that made a better society. No such thing anymore. Well, I see it getting back there slowly. Do you? You know, I do. By that one, and then uh, uh, last year, 
we went to, we, my prayer group, went to McKenzie's school up there in Chicago and Wyoming. We made a donation. And they came and she came and said that and if some school district in Texas have implemented devotion back in their class, in their school, and they have seen a drop and the school teachers resigning, walking away from the school, and a reduction and dispelling the students from school because they're learning how to act. They had devotion, they had uh, which in song, scripture, and prayer, and uh, uh, what is a pledge of allegiance to the flag. And I think they said it had to do Ten Commandments in it, but they was having devotion and prayer time. They had an extra prayer time in addition. All of them that wanted to come to prayer after school, they prayer Bible study, they came and they said they saw a reduction. I said, let me tell you something. There is no defeating God. You can't outdo him. I don't care what you try and do. You can take him out of this. You can take him out of that. But he's still God. And when he gets to letting Satan beat on your backside, you're going to turn right back to him. And then things going to change. You know, I, I was telling my son the other day, and I said, son, you walked away from the church. I said, it's not about who is the pastor. It's about where your heart is and what is being saved. I said, now, when you get tired of being whipped, you're going to come back to the church. Well, I can't. I said, no, you're not trusting God enough to let him make up the shortfall. There is no shortage nor failure in God. I said, well, ask yourself, who's keeping you all these times during your sickness and in your recovery? Who? I said, who do you think is keeping you with you only has one function in lung? Give something to think about. Well, I hope you thought about it. Anyways, all of this to say, when we put God first, everything else going to work out. Yes, we and our faith is going to be tested, but we cannot give up on the fact that when God tells us, I'm with you all the way, and you don't have nothing to fear but fear yourself. And I didn't give you a spirit of fear. I gave you one of power and love that you can overcome everything. You can overcome your fears and don't let fears get in the way. Okay, let me say this. And it goes, the writer says in verse 13, he shows how God promises was made to Abraham and he swear by himself. He said, but God made a promise to Abraham because he swear by no greater than himself. There is no greater God than the God Almighty. When he sweared by his own self that he would make sure Abraham get the blessings that of what he promised him. And we already know, and we all know that God blessed Abraham. God, Abraham believed God. He trusted God. <clears throat> and he trusted him to the end. Now, let me ask this person, this thing. When God told Abraham, to go and sacrifice his son on the altar. What did Abraham tell? He, he went on, he obeyed. But when he had built the fire, to show you how God is, is an all-time God, had his son lying on the altar. And the son is asking, Dad, where is, I don't see the ram. Abraham words to him was, God will provide. And in the nick of time, God showed Abraham the ram that was going to be sacrificed instead of his son. And my point is that <clears throat> do not doubt God. Always trust God, for God is an on-time God. He is the same God then, today, and he will be at the same, at the same one God in generations to come. Because, and when he says, I swear I will give you the what I promised you, he told Abraham, I 
just go on. I'm going to provide. When he tells us, just go on. I'm going to provide. We have to trust God. And we use as Abraham to show us his faith and trust in God. And he his trust, worthiness in God proved beneficial. He didn't have to sacrifice his son. Now, what does that say for us today? When we trust God, <clears throat> everything going to work out okay. All right? Now, and then the other thing is that he told him, to, I'll make you a father of many nations. Because he trusted, he was faithful to God, he, Abraham. And that's what happened. Father Abraham now is counted as the father of many nations. All of those Israelites that believe in God, that they are counted as righteous, as, as the seed of Abraham. And so are we, as we've been grafted in through our faith. And that's that word faith again. Okay, now. Yeah, okay. Now, in the last two verses, 29, 19 and 20, it gives us additional assurances when it says, when we have a hope, as an anchor to the soul. Who is that? Jesus Christ is our anchor. It's no matter if you don't have Christ in your life, you are being tossed in by the every wind of doctrine. You see so many of these people now that believe in all of these false doctrines instead of believing what the Bible says. So if you don't have Christ and, and, and believing that God's word is what's in that Bible, then what are you going to believe? You're leaving yourself open to be tossed back and forth by all the different false doctrines. And I know we've said this before, is that our churches, many of the nomination, is splitting because of what they are saying and, and adopting as doctrinal truth about this the gay and lesbian thing and what the scripture says. Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> well, uh, so, on that, I'm going to leave open it up for questions and comments. Uh, because one thing about it, if this Bible is true, it doesn't say what they're trying to make it say. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I don't know anything else. All of my years that the Bible is God's word. Yep. You said, yep. <laughs> I believe it. I, I, I believe it. <laughs> and I'm going to keep on believing. And mm -hmm. then if they try and show me something different, I'm going to ask them, who wrote it? Who is mm -hmm. your source? Yeah. It didn't come from God. So some takeaways that we can get from this lesson is this. The one true God is the only one that is completely trustworthy. We can go to him for whatever the situation. And we will not only just get an answer, but we will get the answer. Now, whether we want to believe it or not is on us. But he's going to give us the answer. And what he says is true. And his words is not going to come back to him bored. And the other thing is this. Whatever he promises, his promises is going to come to pass. And therefore, we don't have to uh, 
be discouraged. We do get there because in our humanness, but we have to take a deep breath and say, oops, Lord, you're here. I just need to feel your presence. I need your help. I need your strength. You know, we have to understand man can disappoint, but God never disappoints. And we have Jesus Christ as our high priest who gives us direct access to God. Now, I'll leave uh, open for questions. Serving a trustworthy God. Questions are coming. I'll leave that open. Only thing I can say, uh, what you just said, I've heard all my life. Mm -hmm. and I, uh, My body just can't function no other way. <laughs> you know, and I, I <laughs> trust in the Lord. And sometimes, you know, I, humans, we get filled up with different emotions and things, but you have to realize that God has the answer. Yes, and right. He has the answer. Yes, Well, I'm yeah. signing out quite. I got an usher today at church. Okay, my dear. Well, we're glad to have you and your yeah. comments. You're always, I, I don't look at you as no visitor because you're not a visitor. You've been hanging in here with me ever since we started. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> it meant so much to me and encouraged me in very difficult times. And mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. Uh, I, I was thinking able... about Randy this morning. I said, Lord, I promise to go up there. I'm going to have to find a way to get up there. Hopefully we can get up there next Sunday. But next Sunday is a, well, next Sunday is the fourth Sunday, right? No, next <laughs> Sunday is the fifth Sunday. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And because uh, we got, I got a long week. I got that event up at Carver Camp next Saturday. Oh, okay. Yeah, He's... but I. Well, we'll get around to it. It's no big rush. He, he's thankful for that. You know, we just, he's here. We're here for him no matter what, you know. Yeah, sure he is. All is right. Is he then. coming down for the 4th of July? I don't know. I, I oh. really don't. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to certainly get up there to see him and have oh. fellowship with him one after, after service. I can't go before then. Yeah. But, uh, okay. Well, you have a good one. I'll, call, I'll talk to you during the week. All right. Okay, Miss Servo, you've been very quiet. Yes, Pastor. Just you've, been, you've been very quiet. You over <laughs> there? Just listening because okay. um just listening. People talk about they have faith in God, they believe in God, but their actions is totally something different. Uh -huh. And it lets me withdraw from them because they're being a hypocrite. Yeah, prayer is your best weapon against it, I can tell you. You know, mm -hmm. and the first thing they said, oh, my God, thank God, and this and that, I'm really looking at them sideways like, really? <laughs> you know, because they want it like now, whatever they're asking. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's sad. Yeah, it's not, it's not our timing, it's God's timing. And he sees it fit. He know the the way to maneuver. He know how to handle all situations. Yes, he but does. I, but a lot of people want to handle it their own way. That's impossible. Yeah, all of that is true. And when we learn how to get in God's time, we're going to be much better off. Okay. We're going to get started and keep on moving here. And uh, worship service. And then I'm looking for something that I know I should have found it before I got started. Uh, but I'm going to keep looking till I find it. How about that? But we're going to go get started on with us with the service this morning. And I'll say good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning again, and good morning. All of us, it is, it is an, a, a blessed day. And regardless of what the weather is, we're still blessed when we can 
wake up and see the dawn of a new day. Because he did so many didn't wake up this morning. But if God has blessed you to see another day, it's another opportunity for us to tell God thank you and to give him all the praises that, that we can muster because he is worthy of all praises, our glory and our honor. And I'm going to do this song and then we have a Get ready for our scripture reading and have prayer. And by the time, hopefully by that time, I'll have found what I'm looking for. Okay. Have you got good religion? Have you got good religion? Certainly, 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 Lord. Have you got good religion? Certainly, 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 Lord. Or do you love everybody? Certainly, 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 Lord. Or do you love everybody? Certainly, 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 Lord. Or have you got the religion? Certainly, 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 Lord. Have you been to the water? Have you been to the water? Certainly, 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 Lord. Have you got good religion? Certainly, 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 Lord. Have you been baptized? Certainly, 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 Lord. Have you got the religion? Certainly, 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 Lord. Have you got good religion? Certainly, 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 Lord. Have you been to the water? Certainly, 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 Lord. Amen, amen. Okay. That's your scripture. Yes, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Um, I look at this as faith as well. It, it, do, it doesn't depend on what component it may come from. James 4. Mm -hmm. 1 through 4. Okay. From whence comes wars and fighting among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in our members. Yea, lust and have not. Yea, kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Yea, fight and war, and yet have not, because yea, ask not. Yea, ask and receive not, because of yea, ask amiss, that yea may consume it upon our lust. Yea, adulterers, adulteries, know yea, not that the friendship of the world is eternal in immunity with God. Whomsoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Amen. 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 Why I read that. Okay. Because okay. the faith <clears throat> in our lives depends wholly on God, no matter what the circumstances may be. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if we love God like we say, why we're not following his word for word? He hasn't stirred us wrong so far in our lives. Mm. He never stirred us wrong. Right. And that's why I had to read that. Because some people from what I've been, who been, I've been around, I see things that they don't. 
but they talk yes. about God. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Let us pray. Father God, our Heavenly Father, Father, we assemble this morning to, to the house of worship to study thee out of their word, to grow deeper into thy love, thy grace, and thy mercy, and have a better understanding of you and your ways. And then, Father, as we go through the furtherance of the service, then open up hearts and minds that we will increase our faith, our knowledge, and our love for you. And it is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, we are moving on this morning. Uh, huh, the, uh, the only announcement that I have, and I've created another GoFundMe, uh, and I'm going to send it all to you, please. Uh, I promote it on your social media platforms and through your email contacts. But we need to raise some money for the church. And that's exactly what it is. Uh, trying to raise money for the church. The things we need to do. Uh, or want to do. At least we have the assurances of the funds that are there. It might have to be put over to next year. I'm working on trying to get some donations for the... Uh, fellowship giveaway <coughs> and we got to have food we got to have uh school supplies and the backpacks themselves so all that cannot come out of the church's budget because it's not there and that's how that is and then i'm going to go and i don't fuss and argue about uh scripture well, I forgot the church covenant. I'm going to read it here. That the church covenant tells us what we are supposed to do. And we have to get to this. So let me step back and read the church covenant before I start talking about giving because we are not giving it to the pastor because I don't get any money from the church. I serve at the will of God. Free. The church covenant having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angel, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into a covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We... Engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love to survive, strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort to promote its prosperity, spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinance, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret <coughs> devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindreds, and acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to obtain from the sale and the use of intoxicating drink as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to walk over to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, and to avoid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, 
but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen and amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now we're ready for our call to call. And I think we all need some bit of prayer. Also, so much is going on in the world today. It's just unreal. It's, it's just, it can cause you to become discouraged if you care about conditions in your living environment. It really can, and it really will. So, we are going to talk to God for a moment. Let us pray. Our Father, and our God, our Heavenly Father, who is the creator and sustainer of all creations. Father God, we come this morning to say thank you. We cannot come in your presence without saying thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. And your mercy is given to us in the form of your Son, Jesus Christ, who suffered, bled, and died on the cross, paying a debt that he, he did not owe. And all who believe in him and accept him as your, their personal savior has been assured salvation. And Father, we thank you, because that is the epitome of your unconditional love. And we have every reason to give you thanks, glory, and honor. And Father God, we come this morning just to petition your grace, or your throne of grace, and pleading for the conditions of our world, the conditions of this society, our, this nation. There's so much hatred, there's so much wickedness, and, and vitriol that's spewed out on innocent people. That it says never before I've seen, ever seen it this bad in our lifetime. And Father God, I'm asking that you just touch hearts, that they will turn back to you and saying, what must I be saved? Father God, touch these hearts and create in them a clean heart, one that will, the, where the hatred and evilness will be removed <coughs> and replaced with a heart of love, a heart of compassion, and a one of care and long suffering. Father, we just need a Pentecostal like revival once again. So man will rid himself, will be rid of all of the hatefulness and the wrongdoing that is being played out in our, taking place in our society every single day. Then, Father God, uh, not mindful not to ask you for your healing touch. You know who they are. You know their condition. Touch them physically, mentally, and spiritually that they will be healed. And then, Father, touch the comfort less and give them comfort because you are the comforter. And where there's counseling being is needed, Father, you are the counselor. There is no greater counselor than you, Father, and we thank you. And then, Father God, we're asking that you just go in the school rooms, Father. Touch everybody in there, from the administrators, the teachers, to the children and the janitor, because there is no less person one of the other. They all is your children. And they all need your protection, your guidance, and they have your love. And let them recognize that you love them unconditionally. And Father, have schools have let out. I'm asking, Father, you just go with these kids and their summer activities. Keep them safe and under your protective wings. 
And Father God, I don't want to leave out our churches as we are open in your name, Father, and make it the true church as only you could have it. Then the ones who you call to preach and teach your word, preach nothing but the truth of your word. And Father, we just thank you. And Father, that your spirit reign in our churches. And I'm thanking you for having your spirit in this church and touching each and every one of us and then allowing me to speak what you have given me to say because you know who needs to hear it and who has, uh, that will be effective in all the hearers. And then, Father God, I ask you, there are some of our sisters and brothers in foreign countries as such as suffering such devastation. There's hunger abound. They are being ravaged by flood as so many parts of this country is being ravaged by flood. We are being uh, consumed by the extreme heat from a big swath of the, this country. And then the other part is on fire. Father, give all of us in this country the realization they need to put you first that they walked away from you. And Father God, I just pray that putting you back in the school systems and having the Ten Commandments in the school system is uh, the way to go. And having putting you first is the first step and putting you back in the lives of all of your people. Then, Father, I ask that you touch parents and they be godly parents and live for you and being an example for your children, uh, their children, as all of us belong to you. Then, Father God, we thank you in advance for hearing and answering this prayer. Father, we are praying this prayer in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Okay. Um, this morning, our message is coming from, we're still in Hebrews. And the 11th chapter, we're going to pick up a verse 30 through 39. <laughs> and I'm doing a series on faith. And so this is, we're talking about faith over fear. Faith over fear. And for the next two Sundays, we're going to talk about saving faith and a transforming faith. That's where we're going to go with these next Sundays because faith is the key ingredient to salvation. And we have to have faith in, God in order to be believed that he is who he said he is and he do what he said he will do. Okay? Now, let me get over here to Hebrew somehow. I did put it in my book. I, I have it somewhere. Here. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and that is one that talks about faith. But I want to read it in its entirety. The 11th chapter and verses 30 through 39. Okay. Let us go with that. And then we'll move on. And verse 30 reads as follows. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were come past about seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies in peace. And what shall I say more? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdom wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, 
quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, out of wickedness were made strong, wax villain, valiant, and faith, turn to flight the armies of the aliens. Women receive their dead, raised to life again, and others was tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trials and cruel mockings and scourging, yet moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, they were tempted, were slain with the sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, torment, of whom of the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, the word of God for the people of God. Okay, as I said earlier, today's message, Faith Over Fear, is a continuation of last Sunday's message where we talked about faith. Uh, today we're going to learn what it means to have faith over fear. Biblically, it's evidence of those who practice faith over fear and their reward of what they received as a reward for having faith over fear and not allowing that fear to overcome them and cause them to turn back and not exceed or receive the promise of God. So let us start with this by talking about having faith over fear is always trusting God and his provision of care. It is not having faith over fear. It is not the practice of letting fear control or consume our thoughts or having faith failures of trusting God. When our thoughts are consumed with fear, we lack the ability, the drive to move forward and whatever it was we was planning to do and even planning or has been accepting and carrying out the commission given by Christ of going into all the world, preaching and teaching salvation through our faith in him. Okay. When we allow Satan to control and put doubt in our mind, then we don't have the faith to carry on. But the message is to, we're going to point out some of those who took faith over fear and they subdued armies. Their faith over fear cause them to be counted as righteousness because they trusted God. And whatever the situation was, they trusted God because they recognized that number one, that God is sovereign. He's all powerful, not just some powerful, but he is all powerful and there's no failure in him. So they took that, they took the high road of saying, I'm going to trust God. Yes, I might be a little bit fear, but I'm going to have a mustard seed size faith and it's going to move this mountain that I'm facing. Okay. And let's look at here. And uh, that it, let's, let's say, say this. When, let's look at faith from this perspective. 
is that knowing that we can trust God, even if we do not have a clear understanding of this, this situation or the direction we are to take or what's going to be the outcome. And listen here, but we do know that whatever God says, it's going to come to pass. Let us look at Abraham when God told him to get out and leave his country to go. And he didn't tell him to what country. He didn't tell him. He just told him, I want you to go. And I will show you when, I, when you get there. That was Abraham's faith over his lack of confidence and trust in God. He believed that God would show him where the land he is supposed to reside and when he got there. That is faith over fear. And, and I can't stress this enough, that when we trust God, faith, fear will disappear because faith and fear cannot reside in the same household or in the same cubicle. One is going to dominate the other. And let me say this to you once again in a different way. When you put our faith in God, that's God is all we need. And I can't say this enough either, that when you have God, you have all you need, all that you need, because he is a mighty warrior. He will fight your battles, regardless of what it is, he, the battle is. You will not be disappointed. Or let me rephrase my sentence. We will not be disappointed when we trust God, whatever the situation is. Now let me say this. Who can uh, forget Peter when he asked Jesus, could he come and walk on the water with him like he was? And Peter had faith and kept his eyes focused on Christ. But when he, the moment he took his eyes off of Christ, he began to sink and his fear took, took over him because he said, oops, I can't walk on walk. What, what am I doing? And that at that moment, he began to sink. So what am I saying to you? Do not let situations of what seems to be impossible for us to do to cause us to doubt or have a lack of trust in God because, and I don't know how, else how to say it, but God is a trustworthy, never failing God. And as long as Peter kept his eyes on Christ, he was walking. Situations will come in our lives that would sometimes cause us to take our eyes off of God. And I want to say to you today, that it can be a tactical work or tactical maneuver of Satan. But then on the other side, God allows situations to come in our life to, to test our faith in him, that he allow us to see how we're going to trust him, how dire the situation is. When we can keep our focus on God, and stay centered in Christ, there is no situation we can encounter or we will encounter where we'll not overcome it with faith in God. And the whole point I'm trying to say is this. We must always have faith and never let our fears conquer us because one, Satan is a defeated foe, and he is out to defeat us. He will cause us to uh, try to have a defeated attitude or defeated mindset or the mindset that this, I, this look too big. I can't conquer this. And I can tell you this. And let me say this to you to try and bring home a point that I'm, I personally am battling with. I saw a building, a building, church building. Yes, it's huge. 
is in disarray, but the potential is there. And I, uh, first, the fear or the self-doubt that I would be able to get it. No, I wouldn't, but Christ would. And that's what I had to step back and go in consultation with God and say, Lord, if it's for me, you remove all of the obstacles that's in our way. Because okay. it, it meets and it meets and supersedes our needs. It has the seating capacity. It has the classroom. And it's already just set up for a daycare or an after yeah. program. That is nothing but God. He's testing my faith. How am I willing to walk and trust with him, to trust him? And I'm trying to get this point over to you today because I this applies to me. I'm human, and I'm saying, Lord, I trust you. And if it's for me, make it very plain. And remember, we and Scripture tells us, we walk by faith and not by sight. And I'll take you back to Abraham. What if he had asked God, I don't want to go because you have telling me where I'm going. He did not. He started, he got up his family together and they walked. And when he came to the place where God wanted him, he said, but God told him, this is the place. This is the place. When we correlate that over to what I just explained to you. And if it's, this is the one, God will say, this is the one. So I have to keep my faith strong and tell Fear, get behind me in the name of Jesus, because I serve an all-powerful God who sees all and knows all, and that's the same message to all of us today. That God is is immutable; He hasn't changed from the beginning, and He will not change when the end comes. He's going to be the same God. Listen, and let's just keep moving on, showing some examples of all those who walked by faith and they never allowed their fear to overcome them. They kept faith over fear. And verse 30, once again, tells us how the walls of Jericho fell down when the the Israelites marched around the walls of Jericho, just marched for seven times. Because God told them, I want you to march around Jericho seven times. And on that seventh time, I want all of them to blow the trumpets. And when they followed God and kept faith in him, on that seventh time, those walls came tumbling down. Point, trust God. Have faith in God. Look at the harlot, Rahab, when the spies came, the Israelite spies came to her for to hide her out. She risked her life and she hid them so they would be saved. And in the end, her faith was counted as righteous to her. She was saved in her household. And the point, and you'll hear me once again. Faith over fear. When we have faith in God, there is a reward and success for my faith over fear. Okay? Let's look at the bravery of the following persons who their faith had faith over their fear. Gideon, Barak, Samson, Japheth, David, Samuel, and all of the prophets who stood in the face of evilness in their time and took their faith on God and told the truth of God's word. They proclaimed the truth 
regardless how dire their situation were, or the situation in that time were, and how the magnitude of sin were, they stood firm on faith. And these other warriors that we talked about, how I look at David, regardless of what he was facing, he knew who had his back, and that was God. He's the same God. When you exercise faith over fear, God has your back. Because he said in his word, he will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. And that has not changed. And it will not change. Okay? Now, David, I know this is a much noted uh, scripture passage in the Bible. David demonstrated his faith when he faced this giant, Goliath. David was a young lad. He took three rocks and he walked in the name of God. And we know the story. He took one rock and took and hit the giant in the forehead. And God guided that rock to where there were no body armor that the giant had on and slew him. And the point I want us to get over this is that in the mighty name of Jesus, faith abounds. And David is a perfect example. Uh, he slew that giant. And then took the giant sword and cut his own head off with it. The faith of God. And God will always overcome the fear of the enemy. And know this. God is the only one who can destroy our body and our soul. Our enemy can only destroy our body. When we keep our mind focused on God, he cannot. Let me remind you of who has all power by giving you the Job story part of it. When Satan wanted to attack Job, and he told all oh, you, I, we can't touch it because you has a head on it. So I told him, I will remove it. And you can touch every ounce of his, of his body, but you cannot touch his soul. So if Satan was so powerful, why wasn't he able to touch Job's soul? That tells you and I today, God is all powerful. Satan has power, but he's not all powerful. When we put our faith in the one who has all power, we will win every time. Not only was Job restored health-wise, but all of his possession was given back to him double-fold. Trust God. Trust God. Okay. And I want to look at faith from a, a different perspective and of the fear tactics that Satan uses that he, I mean, he tries to use to defeat God's people. Let us know in 2 Timothy, in the fourth chapter, in 7, verse, when it says this, God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Listen here. This is the blueprint to living a peaceful, productive life, accomplishing what God had assigned us as we navigate life's obstacles, we're going to face some challenges in this life. But when we have faith in God, we will be able to navigate all of life's curveballs by remembering who he is and the fact that we belong to God. And God takes care of his people. And we must keep that in mind. And then we should... Look at this scripture. Let's just look at this scripture for a moment. I'll be finished in a minute. 
Isaiah 41 and 10, when it tells us this, it said, fear not, for I am with thee. I don't want you to become dismayed, for I am thy God. I, he's my God. He's your God. He's every believer's God. And he said, I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with the righteousness of my right hand. We do not fear anything or anyone because we have Almighty God fighting our battles for us and clearing away all of the obstacles in our path. And we know this. We serve a promise-keeping God because he has proven himself to be a promise-keeping God. He has proven himself to be trustworthy. He has proven himself that his word is true and he will not come back to him bald. Let me just mention this one promise, and he kept many of them, but this one stands out. When he promised humanity a savior, God moved in his time, but Jesus Christ came, and his mission was going to the cross and humanity sin death. That's a promise that was made by God. That was a promise that was kept by God. Jesus Christ is God's only son. He served here on this earth. He was here for 33 years. He served his ministry, lasted three years, but he turned the world upside down. When he come his turn to go to the cross, come his time to go to the cross, he went, he suffered, he bled, and all who believe in him died with him on Friday morning. But we got up with him on Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday. And because he said, all power is given to me in heaven and earth is in my hand. That's who we serve. And Jesus Christ is God in the second person. He's our Savior. And let me say this. When we look at the results of having faith and trust in God, we'll always overcome our fears. Faith as we read, kingdoms were subdued and will be continued to be subdued because God is our mighty warrior. He's on our side. And I'll say this, when we have God in our life, we have all our need. That means who can forget Daniel when he was in the lion's den? God shut the lion's mouth, causing Daniel and the lion to sleep together in peace. Why? Because Daniel's focus was on God and God's promise, protection, and deliverance. Instead of him, him, Daniel, seeing himself as the lion's dinner, he kept his focus on God and seeing God as his deliverer. That's a big difference. Instead of him seeing him fearfully in fear, causing him to say, no, I'm going to be eaten by these lions. No, he kept his focus on God and God as his deliverer and delivering him out of that situation because of his faith in God. And that says to us, even you in the lion's den, Keep your focus on God as he is our deliverer. Listen, and let's say this. And I'm almost finished. We can reflect, as I alluded to, the Old Testament prophet's faith that was counted to them as righteousness. So will I find faith in Jesus Christ. And when the prophets were tested, they stood firm in their faith. They never doubted. And who can forget Enoch and his unwavering faith in God? But when it come time for him to see death, he did not die as you and I. God took him. That's faith. Faith. And do you know that 
But Noah was told to build an ark and all of the sinfulness that was going on around Noah and the mocking that was going on against Noah, he never wavered in his faith in God. He diligently went about his business preaching repentance and building his ark as God had told him to. Listen, Paul and Acts encourages us to keep our faith in God. Psalms 20, 55 and 22 tells us, I don't care what you're going through, cast all your cares, give it to God and leave it at his feet. He will take care of the situation. We are to trust God and nothing else. For God is bigger than our problem. Even we have, I'm giving you some scriptures for us to remember when we're going through these times that can come to mind. Deuteronomy 31 and 6, encourage us to do this. Be strong and of good courage and fear not. And it said, nor be afraid of them who them is our enemy. For the Lord that God, he is he that will go with us. He will not fail us, nor will he forsake us. Now that's God's word. That's God's promise to us. I want you to be strong in me. I want you to be of good courage. Don't get discouraged by the situation or the, all of the evilness that's going on around you. Listen, I'm here with you. I'm going to be here with you. I'm not going to fail you because there is no failure in me. And I don't want you <coughs> to forget me because I'm not going to never leave. I'm always with you. And Psalm sums it up this way. Psalms 56 and 3 says, When I'm afraid, I put my trust in you, God. When we put our trust in God, all of our fears are gone. Because there's something about the presence of the Lord that calms our fears, our worries, and our disquieted spirit. So then what? When I'm afraid, that's what the psalmist is telling me. Because he was, he was human just as you and I. I put my trust in God. All of my worries, all of my fears, and even my uncomfortable spirit became calm as the calmness of the sea because God is in control. And with one other scripture, and I have to get ready to close, it says, it's found in Isaiah 43 and 1, and he tells us, again, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. God is reassuring his people. I don't want you to fear nothing because you're mine. My son, Jesus Christ, have already redeemed your soul out of hell so you don't have anything to worry about. I want you to trust me at all times. So let me close with these few closing thoughts. Have faith over fear by trusting God always and never doubting God and his word of what he promised. We have God, the Holy Spirit, living in every inside of us believers who in Encompasses. He is our strength when we are strong. He empowers us to face our enemy in confidence, knowing that we have a mighty warrior on our side, fighting our every battle, not some, but every battle. When he tells us, 
cast all. He didn't say some. All your cares on me. I'll take care of it. He's telling you, whatever is going on, give it to me and I'll take care of it. Then, and come in, let's look at this. God dressed us, believers, his soldiers, for the spiritual battle that he knew we were going to face. Let's look at what he put on us. He gave us the helmet of salvation. He gave us the gospel of peace. He girded our lawn with the God's truth. And he gave us the, bless, the breastplate of righteousness. Who's his righteousness? And then he took the shield of faith and gave us that unwavering faith so that whatever how bad the situation comes, we will stand fast in our faith in him. And he gave us one offensive weapon, and that was the sword of the spirit, his word. And he gave us that conquering faith. Every time. Faith over fear. Father God, I, I just pray that the word that was said today was designed to encourage all of us to have faith over fear. And how we can do that is by always trusting you and never doubting the words that you say. Because you are God but you are a promise-keeping God. You never leave us, nor will you forsake us. And Father God, I just pray that this prayer, this message touches the heart of everyone. It is in Jesus' name I pray. As I open the doors of the church, and if you're here and want to join this branch of Zion, feel free to do so. By letter, by Christian, experience or about for water baptism and we will you can text me at 248-225-8744 and say i want to join your branch of zion shepherd ministry or i'll go through our website the shepherd ministry.org membership i will trust in the lord I will trust in the Lord until I die. I am going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I die. This concludes our uh, worship service for this Sunday. Hopefully the message resonated with you and found some pointers from the message, Faith Over Fear. So we'll have our closing song, God be with you. God be with you until we meet again oh.